In post-absorptive state, there is no more food in your gastrointestinal system to absorb. This causes a fall in level of blood sugar, which increases the level of glucagon hormone, from your pancreas. Glucagon has an opposite effect to insulin. Increased glucagon, induces the glycogenolysis, which means breaking down OG stored glycogen into glucose 6-phosphate. In presence of oxygen, in muscles, glucose 6-phosphate, goes through glycolysis, Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation, to produce enough ATP for muscles energy. In lack of oxygen, after glycolysis, the final product, pyruvate, will be transformed into lactate. In liver after glycogenolysis, glucose 6-phosphate can be converted into glucose, which liver uses to control the low blood sugar. In case of starvation, which means the post-absorptive state is elongated up to 24 hours, glycogen sources are diminished, and glycogenolysis is not adequate for ATP production, and the liver starts the process of gluconeogenesis. In gluconeogenesis, liver uses lactate, amino acids and glycerol to produce glucose to keep the blood sugar in normal level. Lactate is a product of anaerobic metabolism, amino acids are provided by breaking down of proteins and peptides, and glycerol, is a product of triglyceride metabolism. Triglycerides are the main form of fat storage, which made by glycerol in three chains of fatty acids. Fatty acids are carried by the albumin proteins in blood circulation, to all the cells in the body, except the brain, can use this fatty acid as a source of energy, by converting it to acetyl-CoA also known as beta-oxidation. If starvation continued, acetyl-CoA will be transformed to ketin bodies, in liver, as a main source of energy.